Part One of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algy Pug. The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam by Omar Khayyam, translated by Edward Fitzgerald, Part One, First Edition, eighteen fifty nine. Awake, for morning in the bowl of night has flung the stone that puts the stars to flight. And lo, the hunter of the east has caught the sultan's turret in a noose of light. Dreaming when dawn's left hand was in the sky, I heard a voice within the tavern cry, Awake, my little ones, and fill the cup, before life's liquor in its cup be dry. And as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern shouted, open then the door you know how little while we have to stay and once departed may return no more now the new year reviving old desires the thoughtful soul to solitude retires where the white hand of moses on the bow puts out and jesus from the ground suspires iram indeed is gone with all its rose and jamshid's seven-ringed cup where no one knows but still the vine her ancient ruby yields, and still a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine high-piping Pelevi with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that yellow cheek of hers to incarnadine. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring the winter garment of repentance fling the bird of time has but a little way to fly and lo the bird is on the wing and look a thousand blossoms with the day woke and a thousand scattered into clay and this first summer month that brings the rose shall take yamshud and kaikobad away but come with old Khayyam, and leave the lot of Kaikobad and Kaikosru forgot. Let Rustam lay about him, as he will, or Hatim Tai cry supper. Heed them not. With me, along some strip of herbage strown, that just divides the desert from the sown, where name of slave and sultan scarce is known, and pity Sultan Mahmud on his throne. Here, with a loaf of bread beneath the bough, a flask of wine, a book of verse, and thou beside me singing in the wilderness, and wilderness is paradise enow. How sweet is mortal sovereignty, think some, others, how blessed the paradise to come. Ah, take the cash in hand, and wave the rest, oh, the brave music of a distant drum. Look to the rose that blows about us. Lo! laughing she says into the world i blow at once the silken tassel of my purse tear and its treasure on the garden throw the worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes or it prospers and anon like snow upon the desert's dusty face lighting a little hour or two is gone and those who husbanded the golden grain and those who flung it to the winds like rain alike to no such aureate earth are turned as buried once men want dug up again think in this battered caravanserai whose doorways are alternate night and day how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his hour or two and went his way they say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where yamshid gloried and drank deep and Badam, that great hunter, the wild ass stamps o'er his head, and he lies fast asleep. I sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears dropped in its lap from some once lovely head. And this delightful herb whose tender green fledges the river's lip on which we lean, ah, lean upon it lightly. For who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen? Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears the day of past regrets and future fears. 
to-morrow why to-morrow i may be myself with yesterday's seven thousand years lo some we loved the loveliest and the best the time and fate of all their vintage pressed have drunk their cup a round or two before and one by one crept silently to rest and we that now make merry in the room they left and summer dresses in new bloom ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend ourselves to make a couch for whom ah make the most of what we yet may spend before we too into the dust descend dust into dust and under dust to lie sans wine sans song sans singer and sans end alike for those who for to-day prepare and those that after a to-morrow stare a muzzin from the tower of darkness cries fools your reward is neither here nor there why all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so learnedly are thrust like foolish prophets forth their words to scorn are scattered and their mouths are stopped with dust oh come with old khayyam and leave the wise to talk one thing is certain that life flies one thing is certain and the rest is lies the flower that once has blown for ever dies myself when young did equally frequent doctor and saint and heard great argument about it and about but evermore came out by the same door as in i went with them the seed of wisdom did i sow and with my own hand laboured it to grow and this was all the harvest that i reaped i came like water and like wind i go into this universe and why not knowing nor whence like water willy-nilly flowing and out of it as wind along the waste i know not whither willy-nilly blowing what without asking hither hurried whence and without asking whither hurried hence another and another cup to drown the memory of this impertinence up from earth's centre through the seventh gate i rose and on the throne of saturn sate and many knots unravelled by the road but not the knot of human death and fate there was a door to which i found no key there was a veil past which i could not see some little talk awhile of me and thee there seemed and then no more of thee and me then to the rolling heaven itself i cried asking what lamp had destiny to guide her little children stumbling in the dark and a blind understanding heaven replied then to this earthen bowl did i adjourn my lip the secret well of life to learn and lip to lip it murmured while you live drink for once dead you never shall return i think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live and merry make and the cold lip i kissed how many kisses might it take and give for in the market-place one dusk of day i watched the potter thumping his wet clay and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured gently brother gently pray ah fill the cup what boots it to repeat how time is slipping underneath our feet unborn to-morrow and dead yesterday why fret about them if to-day be sweet one moment in annihilation's waste one moment of the well of life to taste the stars are setting and the caravan starts for the dawn of nothing oh make haste how long how long in infinite pursuit of this and that endeavour and dispute better be merry with a fruitful grape than sadden after none or bitter fruit you know my friends how long since in my house for a new marriage i did make carouse divorced old barren reason from my bed and took the daughter of the vine to spouse for is and is not though with rule and line and up and down without i could define 
I yet in all I only cared to know was never deep in anything but wine. And lately, by the tavern door agape, came stealing through the dusk an angel shape bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it, and twas the grape, the grape that can with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sects confute, the subtle alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute. The mighty Mahmud, the victorious lord, that all the misbelieving and black horde of fears and sorrows that infest the soul, scatters and slays with his enchanted sword. But leave the wise to wrangle, and with me the quarrel of the universe let be, and in some corner of the hubbub couched, make game of that which makes as much of thee. For in and out, above, about, below, tis nothing but a magic shadow show, played in a box whose candle is the sun, round which we phantom figures come and go. And if the wine you drink, the lip you press, end in the nothing all things end in, yes, then fancy while thou art, thou art but what thou shalt be, nothing, thou shalt not be less. While the rose blows along the river brink, with old Kayam the ruby vintage drink, and when the angel with his darker draught draws up to thee, take that, and do not shrink. Tis all a checkerboard of nights and days, where destiny with men for pieces plays, hither and thither moves, and mates, and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but right or left, a strikes the player goes, and he that tossed thee down into the field, he knows about it all, he knows, he knows. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on, nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. And that inverted bowl we call the sky, where under crawling cooped we live and die, Lift not thy hands to it for help, for it rolls impotently on as thou or I. With earth's first clay they did the last man's need, and then of the last harvest sowed the seed. Yea, the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. I tell thee this, when, starting from the goal, over the shoulders of the flaming foal of heaven, Parwan and Mushtara they flung in my predestined plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck a fibre which about if clings my being. Let the Sufi flout. Of my base metal may be filed a key that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether the one true light kindle to love, or wrath consume me quite, one glimpse of it within the tavern court better than in the temple lost outright. O thou that didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road I was to wander in, thou wilt not with predestination round enmesh me, and impute my fall to sin? O thou, who man of baser earth didst make, and who with Eden didst devise the snake, for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened, man's forgiveness give, and take. Kuzanama. Listen again. One evening at the close of Ramazan, ere the better moon arose, in that old potter's shop I stood alone with the clay population round in rows. And, strange to tell, among that earthen lot, some could articulate, while others not. And suddenly, one more impatient cried, Who is a potter, pray, and who the pot? Then said another, Surely not in vain, My substance from the common earth was ta'en, That he who subtly wrought me into shape Should stamp me back to common earth again. Another said, Why, ne'er a peevish boy Would break the bowl from which he drank in joy. Shall he that made the vessel in pure love and fancy In an after rage destroy? None answered this. But after silence spake a vessel of a more ungainly make. They sneer at me for leaning all awry. What, 
did the hand then o' the potter shake said one folks have a surly taps to tell and do up his visage with the smoke of hell they talk of some strict testing of us pish he's a good fellow and twill all be well then said another with a long drawn sigh my clay with long oblivion is gone dry but fill me with the old familiar juice methinks i might recover by and by so while the vessels one by one were speaking one spied the little crescent all were seeking and then they jogged each other brother brother hark to the porter's shoulder not a creaking ah with the grape my fading life provide and wash my body whence the life has died and in a winding sheet of vine leaf wrapped so bury me by some sweet garden side that even my buried ashes such a snare of perfume shall fling up into the air as not a true believer passing by but shall be overtaken unaware indeed the idols i have loved so long have done my credit in men's eye much wrong have drowned my honour in a shallow cup and sold my reputation for a song indeed indeed repentance oft before i swore but was i sober when i swore and then and then came spring and rose in hand my threadbare penitence the pieces tore and much as wine has played the infidel and robbed me of my robe of honour well i often wonder what the vintners buy one half so precious as the goods they sell alas that spring should vanish with the rose that youth's sweet scented manuscript should close the nightingale that in the branches sang ah whence and whither flown again who knows ah love could thou and i with fate conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire would we not shatter it to bits and then remould it nearer to the heart's desire ah moon of my delight who know'st no wane the moon of heaven is rising once again how oft hereafter rising shall she look through this same garden after me in vain and when thyself with shining foot shall pass among the guests star scattered on the grass and in thy joyous errand reach the spot where i made one turn down an empty glass tamam should end of part one of the rubaiyat of omar khayyam First edition, 1859. Section 2 of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam by Omar Khayyam. Translated by Edward Fitzgerald. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 2, Second Edition, 1868. Wake! For the sun behind yon eastern height has chased the session of the stars from night, and to the field of heaven ascending strikes the sultan's turret with a shaft of light. Before the phantom of false morning died, methought a voice within the tavern cried, When all the temple is prepared within, why lags the drowsy worshipper outside? And as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern door shouted, Open then the door, you know how little while we have to stay, and once departed, may return no more. Now the new year reviving old desires, the thoughtful soul to solitude retires, where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out, and Jesus from the ground suspires. Uram indeed is gone with all his rose, and Jamshid's seven-ring cup, where no one knows, but still a ruby gushes from the vine, and many a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine high-piping Pelevi with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that sallow cheek of hers to incarnadine. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance fling, the bird of time has but a little way to flutter, 
and the bird is on the wing. Whether at Nashapur or Babylon, whether the cup with sweet or bitter run, the wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop, the leaves of life keep falling one by one. Morning a thousand roses brings, you say. Yes, but where leaves the rose of yesterday? And this first summer month that brings the rose shall take Jamshid and Kaikobad away. Well, let it take them. What have we to do with Kaikobad the Great or Kaikosru? Let Rustam cry to battle as he likes, or Hatim Tai to supper. Heed not you. With me along the strip of herbage strown that just divides the desert from the sown, where name of slave and sultan is forgot, and peace to Mahmud on his golden throne. Here, with a little bread beneath the bough, a flask of wine, a book of verse, and thou beside me singing in the wilderness, O oh, wilderness were paradise enow. Some for the glories of this world, and some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come. Ah, take the cash, and let the promise go, nor heed the music of a distant drum. Were it not folly, spider-like to spin the thread of present life away, to win what? For ourselves, who know not, if we shall breathe out the very breath we now breathe in. Look to the blowing rose about us. Lo, laughing, she says, into the world I blow, at once the silken tassel of my purse tear, and its treasure on the garden throw. For those who husbanded the golden grain, and those who flung it to the winds like rain, alike to no such aureate earth are turned, as, buried once, men want dug up again. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, was gone. Think, in this battered caravanserai, whose portals are alternate night and day, how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his destined hour and went his way. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Jamshid gloried and drank deep, and Baram, that great hunter, the wild ass stamps o'er his head, but cannot break his sleep. The palace that to heaven his pillars threw, and kings the forehead on his threshold drew, I saw the solitary ring-dove there, and coo, 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 she cried, and coo. Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears today of past regrets and future fears. Tomorrow, why tomorrow I may be myself with yesterday's seven thousand years. For some we loved, the loveliest and the best that from his vintage rolling time has pressed, have drunk their cup a round or two before, and one by one crept silently to rest. And we, that now make merry in the room they left, and summer dresses in new bloom, ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend, ourselves to make a couch, for whom? I sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears dropped in her lap from some once lovely head. And this delightful herb, whose living green fledges the river's lip on which we lean, ah, lean upon it lightly, for who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen. Ah, make the most of what we yet may spend, before we too into the dust descend, dust into dust, and under dust to lie, sans wine, sans song, sans singer, and... Sans end. Alike for those who for today prepare, and those that after some tomorrow stare, a musean from the tower of darkness cries, Fools, your reward is neither here nor there. 
another voice when i am sleeping cries the flower should open with the morning skies and a retreating whisper as i wake the flower that once has blown for ever dies why all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so learnedly are thrust like foolish prophets forth their words to scorn are scattered and their mouths are stopped with dust myself when young did eagerly frequent doctor and saint and heard great argument about it and about but evermore came out by the same door as in i went with them the seed of wisdom did i sow and with my own hand wrought to make it grow and this was all the harvest that i reaped i came like water and like wind i go into this universe and why not knowing nor whence like water willy-nilly flowing and out of it as wind along the waste i know not whither willy-nilly blowing what without asking hither hurried whence and without asking whither hurried hence ah contrite heaven endowed us with the vine to drug the memory of that insolence up from earth's centre through the seventh gate i rose and on the throne of saturn sate and many knots unravelled by the road but not the master knot of human fate there was a door to which i found no key there was the veil through which i could not see some little talk a while of me and thee there was and then no more of thee and me earth could not answer nor the sea that morn in flowing purple of their lord forlorn nor heaven with those eternal signs revealed and hidden by the sleeve of night and morn then all of the thee in me who works behind the veil of universe i cried to find a lamp to guide me through the darkness and something then said an understanding blind then to the lip of this poor earthen urn i leaned the secret well of life to learn and lip to lip it murmured while you live drink for once dead you never shall return i think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live and drink and that impassive lip i kissed how many kisses might it take and give for i remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured gently brother gently pray for has not such a story from of old down man's successive generations rolled of such a clod of saturated earth cast by the maker into human mould and not a drop that from our cups we throw on the parched herbage but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden far beneath and long ago as then the tulip for her wonted sup of heavenly vintage lifts her chalice up do you twin offspring of the soil till heaven to earth in virtue like an empty cup do you within your little hour of grace the waving cypress in your arms enlace before the mother back into her arms fold and dissolve you in a last embrace and if the cup you drink the lips you press end in what all begins and ends in yes imagine then you are what heretofore you were hereafter you shall not be less so when at last the angel of the drink of darkness finds you by the river brink and proffering his cup invites your soul forth to your lips to quaff it do not shrink and fear not lest existence closing your account should lose or know the type no more the eternal saki from that bowl has poured millions of bubbles like us and will pour when you and i behind the veil are past oh but the long long while the world shall last which of our coming and departure heeds as much as ocean of a pebble cast one moment in annihilation's waste one moment of the well of life to taste 
the stars are setting and the caravan draws to the dawn of nothing oh make haste would you that spangle of existence spend about the secret quick about it friend a hair they say divides the false and true and upon what prithee does life depend a hair they say divides the false and true yes and a single alif were the clue could you but find it to the treasure house and peradventure to the master too whose secret presence through creation's veins running quicksilver like eludes your pains taking all shapes from ma to mahi and they change and perish all but he remains a moment guessed then back behind the fold immersed of darkness round the drama rolled which for the past time of eternity he does himself contrive in act behold but if in vain down on the stubborn floor of earth and up to heaven's unopening door you gaze to-day while you are you how then to-morrow you when shall be you no more o oh, plagued no more with human or divine to-morrow's tangle to itself resign and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender minister of wine waste not your hour nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavour and dispute better he merry with the fruitful grape than sadden after none or bitter fruit you know my friends how bravely in my house for a new marriage i did make carouse divorced old barren reason from my bed and took the daughter of the vine to spouse for is and is not though with rule and line and up and down by logic i define of all that one should care to fathom i was never deep in anything but wine ah but my computations people say have squared the year to human compass eh if so by striking from the calendar unborn to-morrow and dead yesterday and lately by the tavern door agape came shining through the dusk an angel shape bearing a vessel on his shoulder and he bid me taste of it and twas the grape the grape that can with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sext confute the sovereign alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute the mighty mahmud allah breathing lord that all the misbelieving and black horde of fears and sorrows that infest the soul scatters before him with his whirlwind sword why be this juice the growth of god who dare blaspheme the twisted tendril as a snare a blessing we should use it should we not and if a curse why then who set it there i must abjure the balm of life i must scared by some after reckoning tain on trust or lured with hope of some diviner drink when the frail cup is crumbled into dust if but the vine and lub abjuring band are in a prophet's paradise to stand alack i doubt the prophet's paradise were empty as the hollow of one's hand o oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise one thing at least is certain this life flies one thing is certain and the rest is lies the flower that once is blown for ever dies strange is it not that of the myriads who before us pass the door of darkness through not one returns to tell us of the road which to discover we must travel to the revelations of devout and learned who rose before us and as prophets burned are all but stories which awoke from sleep they told their fellows and to sleep returned why if the soul can fling the dust aside and naked on the air of heaven ride is not a shame is not a shame for him so long in this clay suburb to abide but that is but a tent wherein may rest a sultan to the realm of death addressed the sultan rises and the dark ferrash strikes and prepares it for another guest i sent my soul through the invisible some letter of that afterlife to spell 
and after many days my soul returned and said behold myself am heaven and hell heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire and hell the shadow of a soul on fire cast on the darkness into which ourselves so late emerged from shall so soon expire we are no other than a moving row of visionary shapes that come and go round with this sun illumined lantern held in midnight by the master of the show impotent pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days hither and thither moves and checks and slays and one by one back in the closet lays the ball no question makes of eyes and nose but right or left as strikes the player goes and he that tossed you down into the field he knows about it all he knows he knows the moving finger writes and having writ moves on nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line nor all your tears wash out a word of it for let philosopher and doctor preach of what they will and what they will not each is but one link in an eternal chain that none can slip nor break nor overreach and that inverted bowl we call the sky where under crawling cooped we live and die lift not your hands to it for help for it as impotently rolls as you or i with earth's first clay they did the last man need and then of the last harvest sowed the seed yea the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read yesterday this day's madness did prepare tomorrow's silence triumph or despair drink for you know not whence you came nor why drink for you know not why you go nor where i tell you this when started from the goal over the flaming shoulders of the foal of heaven pawan and mushtari they flung in my predestined plot of dust and soul the vine had struck a fibre which about if clings my being let the dervish flout of my base metal may be fouled a key that shall unlock the door he howls without and this i know whether the one true light kindle to love or wrath consume me quite one flash of it within the tavern court better than in the temple lost outright what out of senseless nothing to provoke a conscious something to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure under pain of everlasting penalties if broke what from his helpless creatures be repaid pure gold for what he lent us dross allayed sue for a debt we never did contract and cannot answer oh the sorry trade nay but for terror of his wrathful face i swear i will not call injustice grace nor one good fellow of the tavern but would kick so poor a coward from the place o thou who didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road i was to wander in thou wilt not with predestined evil round in mesh and then impute my fall to sin o thou who man of baser earth didst make and even with paradise devise the snake for all the sin the face of wretched man is black with man's forgiveness give and take as under cover of departing day slunk hunger-stricken ramazan away once more within the potter's house alone i stood surrounded by the shapes of clay and once again there gathered a scarce heard whisper among them as it were the stirred ashes of some all but extinguished tongue which mine ear kindled into living word said one among them surely not in vain my substance from the common earth was ta'en that he who subtly wrought me into shape should stamp me back to shapeless earth again another said why ne'er a peevish boy would break the cup from which he drank in joy shall he that of his own free fancy made the vessel in an after rage destroy none answer this but after silence spake some vessel of a more ungainly make 
they sneer at me for leaning all awry what did the hand then of the potter shake thus with the dead as with the living what and why so ready but the wherefore not one on a sudden peevishly exclaimed which is the potter pray and which the pot said one folks of a surly master tell and daub his visage with the smoke of hell they talk of some sharp trial of us pish he's a good fellow and twill all be well well said another whoso will let try my clay with long oblivion is gone dry but fill me with the old familiar juice methinks i might recover by and by so while the vessels one by one were speaking one spied the little crescent all were seeking and then they jogged each other brother brother now for the porter's shoulder knot a creaking ah with the grape my fading life provide and wash my body whence the life has died and lay me shrouded in the living leaf by some not unfrequented garden side whither resorting from the vernal heat shall old acquaintance old acquaintance greet under the branch that leans above the wall to shed his blossom over head and feet then e'en my buried ashes such a snare of vintage shall fling up into the air as not a true believer passing by but shall be overtaken unaware indeed the idols i have loved so long have done my credit in men's eye much wrong have drowned my glory in a shallow cup and sold my reputation for a song indeed indeed repentance oft before i swore but was i sober when i swore and then and then came spring and rose in hand my threadbare penitence a pieces tore and much as wine has played the infidel and robbed me of my robe of honour well i often wonder what the vintners buy one half so precious as the ware they sell yet ah that spring should vanish with the rose that youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close the nightingale that in the branches sang ah whence and whither flown again who knows would but the desert of the fountain yield one glimpse if dimly yet indeed revealed toward which the fainting traveller might spring as springs the trampled herbage of the field oh if the world were but to recreate that we might catch ere closed the book of fate and make the writer on a fairer leaf inscribe our names or quite obliterate better oh better cancel from the scroll of universe one luckless human soul than drop by drop enlarge the flood that rolls hoarser with anguish as the ages roll ah love could thou and i with fate conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire would not we shatter it to bits and then remould it nearer to the heart's desire but see the rising moon of heaven again looks for us sweetheart through the quivering plain how oft hereafter rising will she look among those leaves for one of us in vain and when yourself with silver foot shall pass among the guests star scattered on the grass and in your joyous errand reach the spot where i made one turn down an empty glass tamam end of section two of the rubaiyat of omar khayyam second edition eighteen sixty eight recording by algy pug Section three of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam by Omar Khayyam Translated by Edward Fitzgerald. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section three, third edition, eighteen seventy two. Wake, for the sun who scattered into flight the stars before him from the field of night, drives night along with them from heaven, and strikes the Sultan's turret with a shaft of light before the phantom of false morning died methought a voice within the tavern cried when all the temple is prepared within why nods the drowsy worshipper outside 
and as the cock crew those who stood before the tavern shouted open then the door you know how little while we have to stay and once departed may return no more now the new year reviving old desires the thoughtful soul to solitude retires where the white hand of moses on the bow puts out and jesus from the ground suspires Iram indeed is gone with all his rose and jamshid's seven-ringed cup where no one knows but still a ruby gushes from the vine and many a garden by the water blows and david's lips are locked but in divine high piping pehlevi with wine 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 red wine the nightingale cries to the rose that sallow cheek of hers to incarnadine come fill the cup and in the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance fling the bird of time has but a little way to flutter and the bird is on the wing whether at najpur or babylon whether the cup with sweet or bitter run the wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop the leaves of life keep falling one by one each morn a thousand roses brings you say yes but where leaves the rose of yesterday and this first summer month that brings the rose shall take jamshid and cocoa bud away well let it take them what have we to do with cocoa bud the great or kai Khosru? let zal and rustum thunder as they will or hatim call to supper heed not you with me along the strip of herbage strown that just divides the desert from the sown where name of slave and sultan is forgot and peace to mahmud on his golden throne a book of verses underneath the bough a jug of wine a loaf of bread and thou beside me singing in the wilderness o wilderness were paradise enow some for the glories of this world and some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come ah take the cash and let the credit go nor heed the rumble of a distant drum look to the blowing rose about us lo laughing she says into the world i blow at once the silken tassel of my purse tear and its treasure on the garden throw and those who husbanded the golden grain and those who flung it to the winds like rain alike to no such orient earth are turned as buried once men want dug up again the worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes or it prospers and anon like snow upon the desert's dusty face lighting a little hour or two was gone think in this battered caravanserai whose portals are alternate night and day how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his destined hour and went his way they say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where jamshid gloried and drank deep and Badam, that great hunter the wild ass stamps o'er his head but cannot break his sleep i sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried caesar bled that every hyacinth the garden wears dropped in her lap from some once lovely head and this delightful herb whose tender green fledges the river lip on which we lean ah lean upon it lightly for who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen ah my beloved fill the cup that clears today of past regret and future fears to-morrow why to-morrow i may be myself with yesterday's seven thousand years for some we loved the loveliest and the best that from his vintage rolling time has pressed have drunk their cup a round or two before and one by one crept silently to rest and we that now make merry in the room they left and summer dresses in new bloom ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend ourselves to make a couch for whom ah make the most of what we yet may spend before we too into the dust descend dust into dust and under dust to lie sans wine sans song sans singer and sans end 
alike for those who for today prepare and those that after some tomorrow stare a musian from the tower of darkness cries fools your reward is neither here nor there why all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so learnedly are thrust like foolish prophets forth their words to scorn are scattered and their mouths are stopped with dust myself when young did equally frequent doctor and saint and heard great argument about it and about but evermore came out by that same door wherein i went with them the seed of wisdom did i sow and with my own hand wrought to make it grow and this was all the harvest that i reaped i came like water and like wind i go into this universe and why not knowing nor whence like water willy-nilly flowing and out of it as wind along the waste i know not whither willy-nilly blowing what without asking hither hurried whence and without asking whither hurried hence oh many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown the memory of that insolence up from earth's centre through the seventh gate i rose and on the throne of saturn sate and many a knot unravelled by the road but not the master knot of human fate there was the door to which i found no key there was the veil through which i could not see some little talk a while of me and thee there was and then no more of thee and me earth could not answer nor the seas that mourn in flowing purple of their lord forlorn nor rolling heaven with all his signs revealed and hidden by the sleeve of night and morn then of the thee in me who works behind the veil i lifted up my hands to find a lamp amid the darkness and i heard as from without the me within me blind then to the lip of this poor earthen urn i leaned the secret of my life to learn and lip to lip it murmured while you live drink for once dead you never shall return i think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live and drink and ah the passive lip i kissed how many kisses might it take and give for i remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured gently brother gently pray listen a moment listen of the same poor earth from which that human whisper came the luckless mould in which mankind was cast they did compose and called him by the name and not a drop that from our cups we throw for earth to drink of but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden far beneath and long ago as then the tulip for her morning sup of heavenly vintage from the soil looks up do you devoutly do the like till heaven to earth in virtue like an empty cup perplexed no more with human or divine tomorrow's tangled to the winds resign and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender minister of wine and if the wine you drink the lip you press end in what all begins and ends in yes think then you are today what yesterday you were tomorrow you shall not be less so when the angel of the darker drink at last shall find you by the river brink and offering his cup invite your soul forth to your lips to quaff you shall not shrink why if the soul can fling the dust aside and naked on the air of heaven ride were it not a shame were it not a shame for him in this clay carcass crippled to abide tis but a tent where takes his one day rest a sultan to the realm of death addressed the sultan rises and the dark ferrash strikes and prepares it for another guest and fear not lest existence closing your account and mine should know the like no more the eternal saki from the bowl has poured millions of bubbles like us and will pour when you and i behind the veil are past oh but the long long while the world shall last which of our coming and departure heeds as the seven seas should heed a pebble cast a moment's halt 
a momentary taste of being from the well amid the waste, and lo, the phantom caravan has reached the nothing it set out from. Oh, make haste! Would you that tangle of existence spend about the secret? Quick about it, friend! A hair perhaps divides the false and true, and upon what, prithee, does life depend? A hair, they say, divides the false and true, yes, and a single alif were the clue, could you but find it, to the treasure-house, and peradventure to the master too, whose secret presence through creation's veins, running quicksilver-like, eludes your pains, taking all shapes from ma to mahi, and they change and perish all, but he remains. A moment guessed, then back behind the fold, a mirst of darkness round the drama rolled, which, for the pastime of eternity, he does himself contrive, enact, behold. But if in vain, down on the stubborn floor of earth, and up to heaven's unopening door, you gaze to-day while you are you, how then to-morrow, you when shall be you no more? Waste not your hour, nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavour and dispute. Better be jocund with the fruitful grape than sadden after none or bitter fruit. You know, my friends, with what a brave carouse I made a second marriage in my house, divorced old barren reason from my bed, and took the daughter of the vine to spouse. For is and is not, though with rule and line, and up and down by logic I define, of all that one should care to fathom, I was never deep in anything but wine. Ah, but my computations, people say, reduce the year to better reckoning? Nay, t'was only striking from the calendar, unborn to-morrow, and dead yesterday. And lately, by the tavern door agape, came shining through the dusk an angel's shape, bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it and twas the grape the grape that can with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sects confute the sovereign alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute the mighty mahmud allah breathing lord that all the misbelieving and black horde of fears and sorrows that infest the soul scatters before him with his whirlwind sword why, be this juice the growth of God, who dare blaspheme the twisted tendril as a snare? A blessing, we should use it, should we not? And if a curse, why then, who set it there? I must abjure the balm of life, I must, scared by some after-reckoning tain on trust, or lured with hope of some diviner drink to fill the cup, when crumbled into dust. O oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise, one thing is certain, this life flies, one thing is certain and the rest is lies, the flower that once is blown for ever dies. Strange is it not, that of the myriads who, before us pass the door of darkness through, not one returns to tell us of the road which to discover we must travel to. The revelations of devout and learned who rose before us, and as prophets burned, are all but stories, which, awoke from sleep, they told their fellows, and to sleep returned. I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me, and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell the shadow of a soul on fire, cast on the darkness into which ourselves, so late emerged from, shall so soon expire. We are no other than a moving row of shadow shapes that come and go, round with a sun-illumined lantern held in midnight by the master of the show. Impotent pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days, Hither and thither moves, and checks, and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but right or left as strikes the player goes, and he that tossed you down into the field, he knows about it all, 
He knows. He knows. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. And that inverted bowl we call the sky, whereunder crawling cooped we live and die, lift not your hands to it for help, for it as impotently rolls as you or I. With earth's first clay they did the last man need, and then of the last harvest sowed the seed. Yea, the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. Yesterday this day's madness did prepare tomorrow's silence, triumph or despair. Drink, for you know not whence you came, nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go, nor where. I tell you this, when, started from the goal, over the flaming shoulders of the foal of heaven, Parwan and Mushtari they flung, in my predestined plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck a fibre, which about if clings my being, let the dervish flout, of my base metal may be fouled a key that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether the one true light, kindled to love or wrath, consume me quite, one flash of it within the tavern court, better than in the temple lost outright. What, out of senseless nothing to provoke a conscious something, to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure, under pain of everlasting penalties, if broke? What, from his helpless creature be repaid pure gold for what he lent us dross allayed, sue for a debt we never did contract, and cannot answer, O oh, the sorry trade! O oh, thou who didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road I was to wander in, thou wilt not with predestined evil round in mesh, and then impute my fall to sin? O oh, thou who man of baser earth didst make, and even with paradise devise the snake, for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened, man's forgiveness give, and take. As under cover of departing day, slunk hunger-stricken Ramazan away, once more within the potter's house alone I stood, surrounded by the shapes of clay. Shapes of all sorts and sizes, great and small, that stood along the floor and by the wall, and some loquacious vessels were, and some listened perhaps, but never talked at all. Said one of them, Surely not in vain my substance of the common earth was ta'en, and to this figure moulded, to be broke or trampled back to shapeless earth again. Then said a second, Ne'er a peevish boy would break the bowl from which he drank in joy, and he that with his hand the vessel made will surely not in after wrath destroy. After a momentary silence spake some vessel of a more ungainly make, they sneer at me for leaning all awry, what, did the hand then of the potter shake? Whereat some one of the loquacious lot, I think a stiff pipkin, waxing hot, all this of pot and potter, tell me then, who makes, who sells, who buys, who is the pot? Why, said another, some there are who tell of one who threatens he will toss to hell the luckless pots he marred in making. Pish! He's a good fellow, and will all be well. Well, murmured one, let whoso make or buy, my clay with long oblivion is gone dry, but fill me with the old familiar juice, methinks I might recover by and by. So while the vessels one by one were speaking, the little moon looked in that all were seeking, and then they jogged each other, Brother, brother, now for the porter's shoulder not a-creaking. Ah, with the grape my fading life provide, And wash the body whence the life has died, And lay me, shrouded in the living leaf, By some not unfrequented garden side. That eve my buried ashes such a snare of vintage Shall fling up into the air, As not a true believer passing by, But shall be overtaken unaware. Indeed the idols I have loved so long Have done my credit in men's eye much wrong, have drowned my glory in a shallow cup, 
and sold my reputation for a song. Indeed, indeed, repentance oft before I swore, but was I sober when I swore? And then, and then came spring, and rose in hand, my threadbare penitence a pieces tore. And much as wine has played the infidel, and robbed me of my robe of honour, well, I wonder often what the vintners buy one half so precious as the stuff they sell. Yet, ah, that spring should vanish with the rose, that youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close, the nightingale that in the branches sang, ah, whence, and whither flown again, who knows? Would but the desert of the fountain yield one glimpse, if dimly, yet indeed, revealed, to which the fainting traveller might spring, as springs the trampled herbage of the field. Would but some winged angel, ere too late, arrest the yet unfolded roll of fate, and make the stern recorder otherwise enregister, or quite obliterate. Ah, love, could thou and I with him conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire, would we not shatter it to bits? and then remould it nearer to the heart's desire? Yon rising moon that looks for us again, how oft hereafter will she wax and wane? How oft hereafter rising look for us through this same garden, and for one in vain? And when, like her, O Saki, you shall pass among the guests star-scattered on the grass, and in your blissful errand reach the spot where I made one, Turn down an empty glass. Tamam. End of section three of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, third edition, eighteen seventy two. Recording by Algie Pug. Section four of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, translated by Edward Fitzgerald. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 4, Fourth Edition, 1879 Wake, for the sun who scattered into flight the stars before him from the field of night, drives night along with them from heaven, and strikes the sultan's turret with the shaft of light. Before the phantom of false morning died, methought a voice within a tavern cried, when all the temple is prepared within, why nods the drowsy worshipper outside? And, as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern door shouted, Open then the door, you know how little while we have to stay, and, once departed, may return no more. Now the new year reviving old desires, the thoughtful soul to solitude retires, where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out, and Jesus from the ground suspires. Iram indeed is gone with all his rose, and Jamshid's seven-ring cup where no one knows, but still the ruby kindles in the vine, and many a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine high-piping Pelevi with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that sallow cheek of hers to incarnadine. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter, and the bird is on the wing. Whether at Naishpur or Babylon, whether the cup with sweet or bitter run, the wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop, the leaves of life keep falling one by one. Each morn a thousand roses brings, you say? Yes, but where leaves the rose of yesterday? And this first summer month that brings the rose shall take Jamshid and Cocoa Bud away. Well, let it take them. What have we to do with Cocoa Bud the Great or Kai Khosru? Let Zal and Rustum bluster as they will, or Hatim call to supper. Heed not you. With me along the strip of herbage strown that just divides the desert from the sown, where name of slave and sultan is forgot, and peace to Mahmud on his golden throne. 
A book of verses underneath the bough, A jug of wine, a loaf of bread, And thou beside me, singing in the wilderness, O oh, wilderness were paradise enow! Some for the glories of this world, And some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come. Ah, take the cash, and let the credit go, Nor heed the rumble of a distant drum. Look to the blowing rose about us, Lo, laughing, she says, into the world I blow, At once the silken tassel of my purse tear, And its treasure on the garden throw. And those who husbanded the golden grain, And those who flung it to the winds like rain, Alike to no such orate earth are turned, As, buried once, men want dug up again. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon Turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, was gone. Think in this battered caravanserai, whose portals are alternate night and day, how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his destined hour, and went his way. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Jamshid gloried and drank deep, and Baram, that great hunter, the wild ass stamps o'er his head, but cannot break his sleep. I sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears dropped in her lap from some once lovely head. And this delightful herb, whose tender green, fledges the river lip on which we lean, ah, lean upon it lightly, for who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen. Ah, my beloved, fill the cup that clears today of past regret and future fears. Tomorrow, why, tomorrow I may be myself with yesterday seven thousand years. For some we loved, the loveliest and the best, that from his vintage rolling time hath pressed, have drunk their cup a round or two before, and one by one crept silently to rest. And we, that now make merry in the room they left, And summer dresses in new bloom, Ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend, Ourselves to make a couch. For whom? Ah, make the most of what we yet may spend, Before we too into the dust descend, Dust into dust, and under dust to lie, Sans wine, sans song, sans singer, and sans end. Alike for those who for today prepare, and those that after some tomorrow stare, a musée from the tower of darkness cries, Fools, your reward is neither here nor there. Why, all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so wisely, they are thrust like foolish prophets forth, their words to scorn are scattered, and their mouths are stopped with dust. Myself, when young, did eagerly frequent doctor and saint, and heard great argument about it and about, but evermore came out by the same door wherein I went. With them the seed of wisdom did I sow, and with my own hand wrought to make it grow, and this was all the harvest that I reaped. I came like water, and like wind I go. Into this universe, and why not knowing, nor whence, like water willy-nilly flowing, and out of it, as wind along the waste, I know not whither, willy-nilly blowing. What, without asking, hither hurried whence? And, without asking, whither hurried hence? Oh, many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown the memory of that insolence. Up from earth's centre, through the seventh gate I rose, and on the throne of Saturn sate, and many a knot unravelled by the road, but not the master knot of human fate. There was the door to which I found no key, there was the veil through which I might not see, some little talk a while of me and thee there was, and then no more of thee and me. Earth could not answer, nor the seas that mourn in flowing purple of their lord forlorn, nor rolling heaven with all his signs revealed and hidden by the sleeve of night and morn.
Then of the thee and me who works behind the veil, I lifted up my hands to find a lamp amid the darkness, and I heard, as from without, the thee within me blind. Then to the lip of this poor earthen urn I leaned, the secret of my life to learn, and lip to lip it murmured, While you live, drink, for once dead, you never shall return. I think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live and drink, and ah, the passive lip I kissed, how many kisses might it take and give. For I remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay, and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured, Gently, brother, gently pray. And has not such a story from of old down man's successive generations rolled of such a clod of saturated earth cast by the maker into human mould? And not a drop that from our cups we throw for earth to drink of, but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden, far beneath and long ago. As then the tulip for her morning sup of heavenly vintage from the soil looks up, do you devoutly do the like, till heaven to earth in virtue, like an empty cup? Perplexed no more with human or divine, tomorrow's tangle to the winds resign, and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender minister of wine. And if the wine you drink, the lip you press, end in what all begins and ends in, yes, think then you are today what yesterday you were, Tomorrow you shall not be less. So when the angel of the darker drink at last shall find you by the river brink, and offering his cup, invite your soul forth to your lips to quaff, you shall not shrink. Why, if the soul can fling the dust aside and naked on the air of heaven ride, were it not a shame, were it not a shame for him in this clay carcase crippled to abide? Tis but a tent where takes his one day's rest, a sultan to the realm of death addressed. The sultan rises, and the dark ferrash strikes, and prepares it for another guest. And fear not, lest existence, closing your account, and mine, should know the like no more. The eternal sake from that bowl has poured millions of bubbles like us, and will pour. When you and I behind the veil are past, Oh, but the long, long while the world shall last, which of our coming and departures heeds as the sea's self should heed a pebble cast. A moment's halt, a momentary taste of being from the well amid the waste, and lo, the phantom caravan has reached the nothing it set out from. Oh, make haste! Would you that spangle of existence spend about the secret? Quick, about it, friend! A hair perhaps divides the false and true, and upon what, prithee, does life depend? A hair, they say, divides the false and true, yes, and a single alif were the clue, could you but find it, to the treasure house, and peradventure to the master too, whose secret presence through creation's veins, running quick silver like, eludes your pains, taking all shapes from ma to mahi and they change and perish all, but he remains. A moment guessed, then back behind the fold, immersed of darkness round the drama rolled, which, for the pastime of eternity, he does himself contrive, enact, behold. But if in vain, down on the stubborn floor of earth, and up to heaven's unopening door, you gaze to-day, while you are you, how then to-morrow, when you shall be you no more. Waste not your hour, nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavour and dispute. Better be jocund with a fruitful grape than sadden after none or bitter fruit. You know, my friends, with what a brave carouse I made a second marriage in my house, divorced old barren reason from my bed, and took the daughter of the vine to spouse. For is and is not, though with rule and line, and up and down by logic I define, with all that one should care to fathom, I was never deep in anything but wine. 
Ah, but my computations, people say, reduce the year to better reckoning? Nay, t'was only striking from the calendar, unborn to-morrow, and dead yesterday. And lately, by the tavern door agape, came shining through the dusk an angel's shape, bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it, and t'was the grape. The grape that can with logic absolute The two and seventy jarring sext confute, The sovereign alchemist that in a trice Life's leaden metal into gold transmute. The mighty Mahmud, Allah-breathing Lord, That all the misbelieving and black horde Of fears and sorrows that infest the soul, Scatters before him with his whirlwind sword. Why, be this juice the growth of God, who dare blaspheme the twisted tendril as a snare? A blessing, we should use it, should we not? And if a curse, why then, who set it there? I must abjure the balm of life, I must, Scared by some after-reckoning tain on trust, Or lured with hope of some diviner drink To fill the cup, when crumbled into dust. O oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise, one thing at least is certain, this life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown for ever dies. Strange, is it not, that of the myriads who before us pass the door of darkness through, not one returns to tell us of the road which to discover we must travel to. The revelations of devout and learned who rose before us and as prophets burned, are all but stories, which, awoke from sleep, they told their fellows, and to sleep returned. I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me, and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell the shadow of a soul on fire, cast on the darkness into which ourselves, so late emerged from, shall so soon expire. We are no other than a moving row of magic shadow shapes that come and go, round with a sun-illumined lantern held in midnight by the master of the show. But helpless pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days, hither and thither moves, and checks, and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but here or there a strikes the player goes, and he that tossed you down into the field, he knows about it all, he knows, he knows. The moving finger writes, and having writ moves on, nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. And that inverted bowl we call the sky, where under crawling cooped we live and die, lift not your hands to it for help, for it as impotently moves as you or I. With earth's first clay they did the last man need, and then of the last harvest sowed the seed. Yea, the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. Yesterday this day's madness did prepare, tomorrow's silence, triumph, or despair. Drink, for you know not whence you came, nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go, nor where. I tell you this, when started from the goal, over the flaming shoulders of the foal of heaven, Parwan and Mushtari they flung, in my predestined plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck a fibre, which about if clings my being, let the dervish flout, of my base metal may be fouled a key that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether the one true light, kindled to love or wrath, consume me quite, one flash of it within the tavern court better than in the temple lost outright. What? out of senseless nothing to provoke a conscious something to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure under pain of everlasting penalties if broke what 
from his helpless creature be repaid pure gold for what he lent him dross allayed sue for a debt we never did contract and cannot answer oh the sorry trade o thou who didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road i was to wander in thou wilt not with predestined evil round in mesh and then impute my fall to sin o thou who man of baser earth didst make and even with paradise devise the snake for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened man's forgiveness give and take as under cover of departing day slunk hunger-stricken ramazan away once more within the potter's house alone i stood surrounded by the shapes of clay shapes of all sorts and sizes great and small that stood along the floor and by the wall and some loquacious vessels were and some listened perhaps but never talked at all said one among them surely not in vain my substance of the common earth was ta'en and to this figure moulded to be broke or trampled back to shapeless earth again then said a second ne'er a peevish boy would break the bowl from which he drank in joy and he that with his hand the vessel made will surely not in after wrath destroy after a momentary silence spake some vessel of a more ungainly make they sneer at me for leading all awry what did the hand then of the pot a shake whereat some one of the loquacious lot i think a sufi pipkin waxing hot all this of pot and potter tell me then who is the potter pray and who the pot why said another some there are who'll tell of one who threatens he will toss to hell the luckless pots he marred in making pish he's a good fellow and twill all be well well murmured one let who so make or buy my clay with long oblivion he's gone dry but fill me with the old familiar juice methinks i might recover by and by so while the vessels one by one were speaking the little moon looked in that all were seeking and then they jogged each other brother brother now for the porter's shoulder knot a creaking ah with the grape my fading life provide and wash the body whence the life has died and lay me shrouded in the living leaf by some not unfrequented garden side that even my buried ashes such a snare of vintage shall fling up into the air as not a true believer passing by but shall be overtaken unaware indeed the idols i have loved so long have done my credit in this world much wrong have drowned my glory in a shallow cup and sold my reputation for a song indeed indeed repentance oft before i swore but was i sober when i swore and then and then came spring and rose in hand my threadbare penitence a pieces tore and much as wine has played the infidel and robbed me of my robe of honour well i wonder often what the vintners buy one half so precious as the stuff they sell yet ah that spring should vanish with the rose that youth's sweet scented manuscript should close the nightingale that in the branches sang ah whence and whither flown again who knows would but the desert of the fountain yield one glimpse if dimly yet indeed revealed to which the fainting traveller might spring as springs the trampled herbage of the field would but some winged angel ere too late arrest the yet unfolded roll of fate and make the stern recorder otherwise enregister or quite obliterate ah love could thou and i with him conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire would not we shatter it to bits and then remould it nearer to the heart's desire yon rising moon that looks for us again how oft hereafter will she wax and wane how oft hereafter rising look for us through this same garden and for one in vain and when like her o saki you shall pass among the guests star scattered on the grass and in your joyous errand reach the spot where i made one 
Turn down an empty glass. Tamam. End of section four of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, fourth edition, eighteen seventy nine. Recording by Algy Pug. Section five of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam by Omar Khayyam. Translated by Edward Fitzgerald. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 5, Fifth Edition, 1889. Wake, for the sun, who scattered into flight the stars before him from the field of night, drives night along with them from heaven, and strikes the sultan's turret with a shaft of light. Before the phantom of false morning died, Methought a voice within the tavern cried, When all the temple is prepared within, Why nods the drowsy worshipper outside? And, as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern shouted, Open then the door, you know how little while we have to stay, And once departed, may return no more. Now the new year reviving old desires, The thoughtful soul to solitude retires, Where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out, And Jesus from the ground suspires. Iram indeed is gone with all his rose, And Jamshid's seven-ringed cup where no one knows, But still a ruby kindles in the vine, And many a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine high piping Pelevi with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that sallow cheek of hers to incarnadine. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter, and the bird is on the wing. Whether at Naishpur or Babylon, whether the cup with sweet or bitter run, The wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop, The leaves of life keep falling one by one. Each morn a thousand roses brings, you say, Yes, but where leaves the rose of yesterday? And this first summer month that brings the rose Shall take Jamshid and Cocoa Bud away. Well, let it take them, what have we to do with Koko Bud the Great or Kai Kosru? Let Zal and Rustam bluster as they will, or Hatim call to supper, heed not you. With me along the strip of herbage strown that just divides the desert from the sown, where name of slave and sultan is forgot, and peace to Mahmud on his golden throne. A book of verses underneath the bough, a jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou beside me singing in the wilderness, O oh, wilderness were paradise enow. Some for the glories of this world, and some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come. Ah, take the cash and let the credit go, nor heed the rumble of a distant drum. Look to the blowing rose about us. Lo, laughing, she says, into the world I blow, at once the silken tassel of my purse tear, and its treasure on the garden throw. And those who husbanded the golden grain, and those who flung it to the winds like rain, alike to no such orient earth are turned, as buried once men want dug up again. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, is gone. Think in this battered caravanserai, whose portals are alternate night and day, how sultan after sultan with his pomp abode his destined hour and went his way. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts where Jamshid gloried and drank deep, and Badam, that great hunter, the wild ass stamps o'er his head, but cannot break his sleep. I sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears dropped in her lap from some once lovely head. And this delightful herb, 
whose tender green fledges the river lip on which we lean ah lean upon it lightly for who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen ah my beloved fill the cup that clears to-day of past regrets and future fears to-morrow why to-morrow i may be myself with yesterday's seven thousand years for some we loved the loveliest and the best that from his vintage rolling time hath pressed have drunk their cup a round or two before and one by one crept silently to rest and we that now make merry in the room they left and summer dresses in new bloom ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend ourselves to make a couch for whom ah make the most of what we yet may spend before we too into the dust descend dust into dust and under dust to lie sans wine sans song sans singer and sans end alike for those who for to-day prepare and those that after some to-morrow stare a muzzin from the tower of darkness cries fools your reward is neither here nor there why all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so wisely they are thrust like foolish prophets forth their words to scorn are scattered and their mouths are stopped with dust myself when young did eagerly frequent doctor and saint and heard great argument about it and about but evermore came out by the same door wherein i went with them the seed of wisdom did i sow and with my own hand wrought to make it grow and this was all the harvest that i reaped i came like water and like wind i go into this universe and why not knowing nor whence like water willy-nilly flowing and out of it as wind along the waste i know not whither willy-nilly blowing what without asking hither hurried whence and without asking whither hurried hence oh many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown the memory of that insolence up from earth's centre through the seventh gate i rose and on the throne of saturn sate and many a knot unravelled by the road but not the master knot of human fate there was the door to which i found no key there was the veil through which i might not see some little talk a while of me and thee there was and then no more of thee and me earth could not answer nor the seas that mourn in flowing purple of their lord forlorn nor rolling heaven with all his signs revealed and hidden by the sleeve of night and morn then of the thee in me who works behind the veil i lifted up my hands to find a lamp amid the darkness and i heard as from without the thee within me blind then to the lip of this poor earthen urn i leaned the secret of my life to learn and lip to lip it murmured while you live drink for once dead you never shall return i think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered once did live and drink and ah the passive lip i kissed how many kisses might it take and give for i remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured gently brother gently pray and has not such a story from of old down man's successive generations rolled of such a clod of saturated earth cast by the maker into human mould and not a drop that from our cups we throw for earth to drink of but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden far beneath and long ago as then the tulip for her morning sup of heavenly vintage from the soil looks up do you devoutly do the like till heaven to earth in virtue like an empty cup perplexed no more with human or divine to-morrow's tangle to the winds resign and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender minister of wine and if the wine you drink 
the lip you press end in what all begins and ends in yes think then you are today what yesterday you were tomorrow you shall not be less so when that angel of the darker drink at last shall find you by the river brink and offering his cup invite your soul forth to your lips to quaff you shall not shrink why if the soul can fling the dust aside and naked on the air of heaven ride wert not a shame wert not a shame for him in this clay carcase crippled to abide tis but a tent where takes his one day's rest a sultan to the realm of death addressed the sultan rises and the dark for us strikes and prepares it for another guest and fear not lest existence closing your account and mine should know the like no more the eternal saki from that bowl has poured millions of bubbles like us and will pour when you and i behind the veil are past oh but the long long while the world shall last which of our coming and departure heeds as the sea's self should heed a pebble cast a moment's halt a momentary taste of being from the well amid the waste and lo the phantom caravan has reached the nothing it set out from oh make haste would you that spangle of existence spend about the secret quick about it friend a hair perhaps divides the false and true and upon what prithee may life depend a hair they say divides the false and true yes and a single alif were the clue could you but find it to the treasure house and peradventure to the master too whose secret presence through creation's veins running quick silver like eludes your pains taking all shapes from ma to mahi and they change and perish all but he remains a moment guessed then back behind the fold immersed of darkness round the drama rolled which for the past time of eternity he does himself contrive enact behold but if in vain down on the stubborn floor of earth and up to heavens an opening door you gaze to-day while you are you how then to-morrow when you shall be you no more waste not your hour nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavour and dispute better be jocund with the fruitful grape than sad enough after none or bitter fruit you know my friends with what a brave carouse i made a second marriage in my house divorced old barren reason from my bed and took the daughter of the vine to spouse for is and is not though with rule and line and up and down by logic i define of all that one should care to fathom i was never deep in anything but wine ah but my computations people say reduce the year to better reckoning nay twas only striking from the calendar unborn to-morrow and dead yesterday and lately by the tavern door agape came shining through the dusk an angel shape bearing a vessel on his shoulder and he bid me taste of it and twas the grape the grape that came with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sects confute the sovereign alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute the mighty mahmud allah breathing lord that all the misbelieving and black horde of fears and sorrows that infest the soul scatters before him with his whirlwind sword why be this juice the growth of god who dare blaspheme the twisted tendril as a snare a blessing we should use it should we not and if a curse why then who set it there i must abjure the balm of life i must scared by some after reckoning tain on trust or lured with hope of some diviner drink to fill the cup when crumbled into dust o oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise one thing at least is certain this life flies one thing is certain and the rest is lies the flower that once has blown for ever dies strange is it not that of the myriads who before us pass the door of darkness through not one returns to tell us of the road 
which to discover we must travel to. The revelations of devout and learned who rose before us and as prophets burned are all but stories which awoke from sleep they told their comrades and to sleep returned. I sent my soul through the invisible some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell the shadow of a soul on fire, cast on the darkness into which ourselves, so late emerged from, shall so soon expire. We are no other than a moving row of magic shadow shapes that come and go round with a sun illumined lantern held in midnight by the master of the show. But helpless pieces of the game he plays upon this checkerboard of nights and days, hither and thither moves, and checks and slays, and one by one back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but here or there as strikes the player goes, and he that tossed you down into the field, he knows about it all, he knows, he knows. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on, nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. And that inverted bowl we call the sky, where under crawling cooped we live and die, lift not your hands to it for help, for it as impotently moves as you or I. With earth's first clay they did the last man need, and then of the last harvest sowed the seed, yea, the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. Yesterday this day's madness did prepare, tomorrow's silence, triumph, or despair. Drink, for you know not whence you came, nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go, nor where. I tell you this, when, started from the goal, over the flaming shoulders of the foal of heaven, Pawan and Mushtari they flung, in my predestined plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck a fibre, which about if clings my being, let the dervish flout. Of my base metal may be fouled a key, that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether the one true light, kindled to love or wrath, consume me quite, one flash of it within the tavern court, better than in the temple lost outright. What, out of senseless nothing to provoke a conscious something, to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure, under pain of everlasting penalties, if broke? What, from his helpless creature be repaid pure gold for what he lent him, dross allayed, sue for a debt he never did contract, and cannot answer? Oh, the sorry trade! O oh, thou, who didst with pitfall and with gin Beset the road I was to wander in, Thou wilt not with predestined evil round in mesh, And then impute my fall to sin? O oh, thou, who man of baser earth didst make, And even with paradise devise the snake, For all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened, Man's forgiveness give, and take. As under cover of departing day, Slunk hunger-stricken Ramazan away, Once more within the potter's house alone I stood, Surrounded by the shapes of clay. Shapes of all sorts and sizes, great and small, That stood along the floor and by the wall, And some loquacious vessels were, And some listened perhaps, but never talked at all. Said one among them, Surely not in vain my substance of the common earth was ta'en, And who this figure moulded, to be broke or trampled back To shapeless earth again? Then said a second, Ne'er a peevish boy would break the ball from which he drank in joy, And he that with his hand the vessel made Will surely not in after wrath destroy. After a momentary silence spake Some vessel of a more ungainly make, they sneer at me for leaning all awry. What, did the hand then of the potter shake? Whereat some one of the loquacious lot, I think a Sufi pipkin waxing hot, 
Well, this a pot and potter, tell me then, who is the potter, pray, and who the pot? Why, said another, some there are who tell of one who threatens he will toss to hell the luckless pots he marred in making. Pish, he's a good fellow, and will all be well. Well, murmured one, let who so make or buy, my clay with long oblivion is gone dry. But fill me with the old familiar juice, methinks I might recover by and by. So while the vessels one by one were speaking, the little moon looked in that all were seeking, and then they jogged each other, Brother, brother, now for the porter's shoulder knot a creaking. Ah, with the grape my fading life provide, and wash my body whence the life has died, and lay me shrouded in the living leaf by some not unfrequented garden side. Then eved my buried ashes such a snare of vintage shall fling up into the air, as not a true believer passing by, but shall be overtaken unaware. Indeed, the idols I have loved so long have done my credit in this world much wrong, have drowned my glory in a shallow cup, and sold my reputation for a song. Indeed, indeed repentance oft before I swore, but was I sober when I swore? And then, and then came spring, and rose in hand, my threadbare penitence a pieces tore. And much as wine has played the infidel, and robbed me of my robe of honour, well, I wonder often what the vintners buy one half so precious as the stuff they sell. Yet, ah, that spring should vanish with the rose, That youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close, The nightingale that in the branches sang, Ah, whence, and whither flown again, who knows? Would but the desert of the fountain yield one glimpse, If dimly, yet indeed revealed, To which the fainting traveller might spring, As springs the trampled herbage of the field. Would but some winged angel, ere too late, Arrest the yet unfolded roll of fate, And make the stern recorder otherwise enregister, Or quite obliterate. Ah, love, could thou and I with him conspire To grasp this sorry scheme of things entire, Would not we shatter it to bits, And then remould it nearer to the heart's desire? Yon rising moon that looks for us again, How oft hereafter will she wax and wane, How oft hereafter rising look for us Through this same garden, and for one in vain. And when, like her, Osaki, you shall pass Among the guests, star-scattered on the grass, And in your joyous errand reach the spot Where I made one, turn down an empty glass. Tum-mum. End of section 5 of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, 5th edition, 1889. Recording by Algy Pug. Section 6 of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam by Omar Khayyam. Translated by Edward Fitzgerald. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 6. Introduction to the Third Edition, 1872 Omar Khayyam, the Astronomer-Poet of Persia Omar Khayyam was born at Nishapur in Khorasam in the latter half of our eleventh and died within the first quarter of our twelfth century. The slender story of his life is curiously twined about that of two other very considerable figures in their time and country, one of whom tells the story of all three. This was Nizam ul Mulk, vizier to Ap Ashlan the son and Malik Shah the grandson of Togrul Beg the Tartar, who had wrested Persia from the feeble successor of Mahmud the Great and founded that Seljukian dynasty which finally roused Europe into the Crusades. This Nizam ul Mulk, in his Wasayat, or testament, which he wrote and left as a memorial for future statesmen, relates the following, as quoted in the Calcutta Review, number 59, from Murkhan's History of the Assassins. One of the greatest of the wise men of Khorasam was the Imam Mowafak, 
of Naishapur, a man highly honoured and reverenced. May God rejoice his soul. His illustrious years exceeded eighty-five, and it was the universal belief that every boy who read the Koran, or studied the traditions in his presence, would assuredly attain to honour and happiness. For this cause did my father send me from Tus to Naishapur with Abdus Samad, the doctor of law, that I might employ myself in study and learning under the guidance of that illustrious teacher. Towards me he ever turned an eye of favour and kindness, and as his pupil I felt for him extreme affection and devotion, so that I passed four years in his service. When I first came there I found two other pupils of mine own age newly arrived, Hakim Omar Khayyam and the ill-fated Ben Sabah. Both were endowed with sharpness of wit and the highest natural powers, and we three formed a close friendship together. When the Imam rose from his lectures, they used to join me, and we repeated to each other the lessons we had heard. Now Omar was a native of Naishapur, while Hassan bin Sabah's father was one Ali, a man of austere life and practice, but heretical in his creed and doctrine. One day Hassan said to me, and to Khayyam, It is a universal belief that the pupils of the Imam Mawafak will attain to fortune. Now, even if we all do not attain thereto, without doubt one of us will. What then shall be our mutual pledge and bond? We answered, Be it what you please. Well, he said, let us make a vow, that to whomsoever this fortune falls, he shall share it equally with the rest, and reserve no preeminence for himself. Be it so, we both replied, and on those terms we mutually pledged our words. Years rolled on, and I went from Khorasam to Transoxiana, and wandered to Ghazni and Kabul, and when I returned I was invested with office, and rose to be administrator of affairs during the Sultanate of Sultan Alp Ashlan. He goes on to state that years passed by, and both his old school friends found him out, and came and claimed a share in his good fortune, according to the school day vow. The vizier was generous and kept his word. Hassan demanded a place in the government, which the sultan granted at the vizier's request. But discontented with the gradual rise, he plunged into the maze of intrigue of an oriental court and failing in a base attempt to supplant his benefactor he was disgraced and fell after many mishaps and wanderings hassan became the head of the persian sect of the ismaelians a party of fanatics who had long murmured in obscurity but rose to an evil eminence under the guidance of his strong and evil will in a d ten ninety he seized the castle of alamut in the province of rudbar which lies in the mountainous tract south of the caspian sea and it was from this mountain home he gained that evil celebrity among the crusaders as the old man of the mountains and spread terror through the mohammedan world and it is yet disputed where the word assassin which they have left in the language of modern europe as their dark memorial is derived from the hashish or opiate of hemp leaves the indian bung with which they maddened themselves to the sullen pitch of oriental desperation or from the name of the founder of the dynasty whom we have seen in his quiet collegiate days at Naishapur. One of the countless victims of the assassin's dagger was Nizam ul Mulk himself, the old schoolboy friend. Some of Omar's rubaiyat warn us of the danger of greatness, the instability of fortune, and while advocating charity to all men, recommending us to be too intimate with none. Atta makes Nizam ul Mulk use the very words of his friend Omar. Rubiat number 28. When Nuzam ul Mulk was in the agony of death, he said, O oh God, I am passing away in the hand of the wind. Omar Khayyam also came to the vizier to claim his share, but not to ask for title or office. The greatest boon you can confer on me, he said, is to let me live in a corner under the shadow of your fortune, to spread wide the advantages of science, and to pray for your long life and prosperity. The vizier tells us that when he found Omar was really sincere in his refusal, he pressed him no further, but granted him a yearly pension of twelve hundred mithgals of gold from the treasury of Naishapur. At Naishapur thus lived and died Omar Khayyam, busied, adds the vizier, 
in winning knowledge of every kind, and especially in astronomy, wherein he attained to a very high preeminence. Under the Sultanate of Malik Shah he came to Merv, and obtained great praise for his proficiency in science, and the Sultan showered favours upon him. When the Malik Shah determined to reform the calendar, Omar was one of the eight learned men employed to do it. The result was the Jalali era, so called from Jalal ul Din, one of the king's names. A computation of time, says Gibbon, which surpasses the Julian and approaches the accuracy of the Gregorian style. He is also the author of some astronomical tables, entitled Zidji Malik Shahi, and the French have lately republished and translated an Arabic treatise of his on algebra. His Takkalis, or poetical name, Kayam, signifies a tent maker and he is said to have at one time exercised that trade, perhaps before Nizam ul Mulk's generosity raised him to independence. Many Persian poets similarly derive their names from their occupations. Thus we have Attar, a druggist, Assar, an oil presser, etc. Omar himself alludes to his name in the following whimsical lines. Kayam, who stitched the tents of science, has fallen in grief's furnace and been suddenly burned. The shears of fate have cut the tent ropes of his life, and the broker of hope has sold him for nothing. Though all these, like our smiths, archers, millers, fletchers, etc., may simply retain the surname of an hereditary calling. We have only one more anecdote to give of his life, and that relates to the clothes. It is told in the anonymous preface, which is sometimes prefixed to his poems. It has been printed in the Persian in the appendix to Hyde's Veterum Persarum Religio, page 499, and Derbilo alludes to it in his Bibliothèque under Qiyam. It is written in the Chronicles of the Ancients that this king of the wise, Omar Qiyam, died at Nishapur in the year of the Hegira 517, A.D. 1123. In science he was unrivalled, the very paragon of his age. Khwaja Nizami of Samarkand, who was one of his pupils, relates the following story. I often used to hold conversations with my teacher, Omar Khayyam, in a garden, and one day he said to me, My tomb shall be in a spot where the north wind may scatter roses over it. I wondered at the words he spake, but I knew that his were no idle words. Years after, when I chanced to revisit Naishapur, I went to his final resting place, and lo, it was just outside a garden, and trees laden with fruit stretched their boughs over the garden wall, and dropped their flowers upon his tomb, so that the stone was hidden under them. Philosophe musulman qui avait que une odeur de sainteté dans sa religion, vers la fin de première et les commençons de second siècle, no part of which, except the philosophe, can apply to our Kayam. The rashness of the words, according to Derbelo, consisted of being so opposed to those in the Koran. No man knows where he shall die. This story of Omar reminds me of another so naturally, and when one remembers how wide of his humble mark the noble sailor aimed, so pathetically told by Captain Cook, not by Dr. Hawkworth, in his second voyage, page 374. When leaving Ulietia, Oreo's last request for me was to return. When he saw he could not obtain that promise, he asked the name of my Marae, burying place. As strange a question as this was, I hesitated not a moment to tell him Stepney, the parish in which I live when in London. I was made to repeat it several times over till I could pronounce it, and then Stepney Marae no Tute was echoed through a hundred mouths at once. I afterwards found the same question had been put to Mr. Forster by a man on shore, but he gave a different, and indeed more proper answer, by saying, No man who used the sea could say where he should be buried. Thus far, without fear of trespass, from the Calcutta Review, the writer of it, on reading in India this story of Omar's grave, was reminded, he says, of Cicero's account of finding Archimedes' tomb at Syracuse, buried in grass and weeds. I think Thorvaldsen desired to have roses grow over him, a wish religiously fulfilled for him to the present day, I believe. However, to return to Omar. 
Though the Sultan showered favours upon him, Omar's epicurean audacity of thought and speech caused him to be regarded askance in his own time and country. He is said to have been especially hated and dreaded by the Sufis, whose practice he ridiculed, and whose faith amounts little more than his own, when stripped of the mysticism and formal recognition of Islamism under which Omar would not hide. Their poets, including Hafiz, who are, with the exception of Firdausi, the most considerable in Persia, borrowed largely, indeed, of Omar's material, but turning it to a mystical use more convenient to themselves and the people they addressed a people quite as quick of doubt as of belief, as keen of bodily sense as of intellectual, and delighting in a cloudy composition of both, in which they could float luxuriously between heaven and earth, and this world and the next, on the wings of a poetical expression that might serve indifferently for either. Omar was too honest of heart as well as of head for this. Having failed, however mistakenly, of finding any providence but destiny, and any world but this, he set about making the most of it, preferring rather to soothe the soul through the senses into acquiescence with things as he saw them, than to perplex it with vain disquietude after what they might be. It has been seen, however, that his worldly ambition was not exorbitant, and he very likely takes a humorous or perverse pleasure in exalting the gratification of sense above that of intellect in which he must have taken great delight, although it failed to answer the questions in which he, in common with all men, was most vitally interested. For whatever reason, however, Omar, as before said, has never been popular in his own country, and therefore has been but scantily transmitted abroad. The manuscripts of his poems, mutilated beyond the average casualties of Oriental transcription, are so rare in the East as scarce to have reached westward at all, in spite of all the acquisitions of arms and science. There is no copy at the India House, none at the Bibliothèque Nationale of Paris. We know of but one in England, number 140 of the Oosley Manuscript of the Bodleian, written at Shiraz, A.D. 1460. This contains but 158 rubaiyat, one in the Asiatic Society's Library at Calcutta, of which we have a copy, contains, and yet incomplete, 516, although swelled to that by all kinds of repetition and corruption. So von Hummer speaks of his copy as containing about 200, while Dr. Springer catalogues a Lucknow manuscript at double that number. The scribes, too, of the Oxford and Calcutta manuscripts seem to do their work under a sort of protest, each beginning with a tetrastich, whether genuine or not, taken out of its alphabetical order, the Oxford with one of apology, the Calcutta with one of expostulation, supposed, says a notice prefixed to the manuscript, to have arisen from a dream, in which Omar's mother asked about his future fate. It may be rendered thus, O thou, who burnst in heart for those who burn in hell, whose fires thyself shall feed in turn, how long be crying, Mercy on them, God! Why? Who art thou to teach, and he to learn? The Bodleian quatrain pleads pantheism by way of justification. If I myself upon a looser creed have loosely strung the jewel of good deed, let this one thing for my atonement plead, that one for two I never did misread. Since this paper was written, adds the reviewer in a note, we have met with a copy of a very rare edition, printed at Calcutta in 1836. This contains 438 tetrastics, with an appendix containing 54 others not found in some manuscripts. The reviewer, to whom I owe the particulars of Omar's life, concludes his review by comparing him with Lucretius, both as to natural temper and genius, and as acted upon by the circumstances in which he lived. Both, indeed, were men of subtle, strong, and cultivated intellect, fine imagination, and hearts passionate for truth and justice, who justly revolted from their country's false religion, and false or foolish devotion to it, but who fell short of replacing what they subverted by such better hope as others, with no better revelation to guide them, had yet made a law to themselves. Lucretius, indeed, with such material as Epicurus furnished, satisfied himself with the theory of a vast machine fortuitously constructed, and acting by a law that implied no legislator, and so composing himself into a stoical, 
rather than epicurean severity of attitude sat down to contemplate the mechanical drama of the universe which he was part actor in himself and all about him as in his own sublime description of the roman theatre discoloured with the lurid reflex of the curtain suspended between the spectator and the sun omar more desperate or more careless of any so complicated system as resulted in nothing but hopeless necessity flung his own genius and learning with a bitter or humorous jest into the general ruin which their insufficient glimpses only served to reveal and pretending sensual pleasure as the serious purpose of life only diverted himself with speculative problems of deity destiny matter and spirit good and evil and other such questions easier to start than to run down and the pursuit of which becomes a very weary sport at last professor cowell with regard to the present translation the original rubaiyat as missing an arabic guttural these testristics are more musically called are independent stanzas consisting each of four lines of equal though varied prosody sometimes all rhyming but oftener as here imitated the third line a blank somewhat as in the greek alcaic where the penultimate line seems to lift and suspend the wave that falls over in the last as usual with such kind of oriental verse the rubaiyat follow one another according to alphabetic rhyme a strange succession of grave and gay those here selected are strung into something of an eclogue with perhaps a less than equal proportion of the drink and make merry which genuine or not recurs over frequently in the original either way the result is sad enough saddest perhaps when most ostentatiously merry more apt to move sorrow than anger toward the old tent-maker who after vainly endeavouring to unshackle his steps from destiny and to catch some authentic glimpse of to-morrow fell back upon to-day which has outlasted so many to-morrows as the only ground he had got to stand upon however momentarily slipping from under his feet from the third edition while the second edition of this version of omar was preparing Monsieur Nicolas, French consul at Recht, published a very careful and very good edition of the text, from a lithographed copy at Tehran, comprising 464 rubaiyat, with translation and notes of his own. Monsieur Nicolas, whose edition has reminded me of several things, and instructed me in others, does not consider Omar to be the material Epicurean that I have literally taken him for, but a mystic shadowing the deity under the figure of wine wine-bearer etc as hafiz is supposed to do in short a sufi poet like hafiz and the rest i cannot see reason to alter my opinion formed as it was more than a dozen years ago when omar was first shown me by one to whom i am indebted for all i know of oriental and very much of other literature he admired omar's genius so much that he would gladly have adopted any such interpretation of his meaning as M. Nicolas if he could. That he could not appears by his paper in the Calcutta Review already so largely quoted, in which he argues from the poems themselves as well as from what records remain of the poet's life. Perhaps he would have edited the poems himself some years ago. He may now as little approve of my version on one side as of M. Nicolas's theory on the other and if more were needed to disprove m nicolas theory there is the biographical notice which he himself has drawn up in direct contradiction to the interpretation of the poems given in his notes see pages thirteen to fourteen of his preface indeed i hardly knew poor omar was so far gone till his apologist informed me for here we see that whatever were the wine that hafiz drank and sang the veritable juice of the grape it was which omar used not only when carousing with his friends but says m nicholas in order to excite himself to that pitch of devotion which others reached by cries and houlements and yet whenever wine wine-bearer etc occur in the text which is often enough m nicholas carefully annotates dieu la divinité etc so carefully indeed that one is tempted to think that he was indoctrinated by the sufi with whom he read the poems note to rubaiyat two page eight a persian would naturally wish to vindicate a distinguished countryman and a sufi to enrol him in his own sect which already comprises all the chief poets of persia 
What historical authority has Monsieur Nicola to show that Omar gave himself up avec passion à l'étude de la philosophie des soufis? Preface, page 13. The doctrines of pantheism, materialism, necessity, etc., were not peculiar to the Sufi, nor to Lucretius before them, nor to Epicurus before him, probably the very original irreligion of thinking men from the first, and very likely to be the spontaneous growth of a philosopher living in an age of social and political barbarism, under the shadow of one of the two and seventy religions supposed to divide the world. Von Hummer, according to Springer's Oriental Catalogue, speaks of Omar as a free thinker and a great opponent of Sufism, perhaps because, while holding much of their doctrine, he would not pretend to any inconsistent severity of morals. Sir W. Oosley has written a note to something of the same effect on the fly-leaf of the Bodleian manuscript, and in two rubiat of Monsieur Nicola's own edition, Souf and Soufi are both disparagingly named. No doubt many of these quatrains seem unaccountable unless mystically interpreted, but many more is unaccountable unless literally. Were the wine spiritual, for instance, how wash the body with it when dead? Why make cups of the dead clay to be filled with la de vanité by some succeeding mystic? Monsieur Nicolas himself is puzzled by some bizarre and trop oriental allusions and images, d'une sensualité quelquefois revoltante, indeed, which le convenance do not permit him to translate, but still which the reader cannot but refer to la de vanité. No doubt also many of the quatrains in the Tehran as in the Calcutta copies, are spurious, such rubiat being the common form of epigram in Persia. But this, at best, tells us as much one way as another. Nay, the Sufi, who may be considered the scholar and man of letters in Persia, would be far more likely than the careless epicure to interpolate what favours his own view of the poet. I observed that very few of the more mystical quatrains are in the Bodleian manuscript, which must be one of the oldest, as dated at Shiraz, Ante Higira, 865, A.D. 1460. And this, I think, especially distinguishes Omar. I cannot help calling him by his, no, not Christian, familiar name, from all other Persian poets, that, whereas with them the poet is lost in his song, the man in allegory and abstraction, we seem to have the man, the bon homme, Omar himself, with all his humours and passions, as frankly before us, as if we were really at table with him, after the wine had gone round. A note to Quatrain 234 admits that, however clear the mystical meaning of such images must be to the Europeans, they are not quoted without rougissant, even by laymen in Persia. Quand au terme de tendresse qui commençons ce quatre, comme tant d'autres dans ces recailles non lecteurs, Habitué maintenant à la tranchée des expressions, si souvent employées par Kéam pour rendre ses pensées sous le mot divin, et à la singularité des images trop orientales, d'une sensualité quelquefois révoltante, n'aurons pas de peine à se persuader qu'il s'agit de la divinité. Bien que cette conviction soit vivement discutée par les moules musulmans et même par beaucoup de laïcs qui rougissent véritablement d'une pareille licence de leurs compatriotes à l'égard des choses spirituelles. I must say that I, for one, never wholly believed in the mysticism of Hafiz. It does not appear there was any danger in holding and singing Sufi pantheism so long as the poet made his salaam to Muhammad at the beginning and end of his song. Under such conditions, Jalal Uddin, Jami, Attar and others sang, using wine and beauty indeed as images to illustrate, not as a mask to hide, the divinity they were celebrating. Perhaps some allegory less liable to mistake or abuse had been better among so inflammable a people much more so when, as some think with Hafiz and Omar, the abstract is not only likened to, but identified with the sensual image, hazardous, if not to the devotee himself, yet to his weaker brethren, and worse for the profane in proportion as the devotion of the initiated grew warmer. And all for what? 
to be tantalized with images of sensual enjoyment which must be renounced if one would approximate a god who according to the doctrine is sensual matter as well as spirit and into whose universe one expects unconsciously to merge after death without hope of any posthumous beatitude in another world to compensate for all one's self-denial in this lucretius's blind divinity certainly merited and probably got as much self-sacrifice as this of the sufi and the burden of omar's song if not let us eat is assuredly let us drink for tomorrow we die and if hafiz meant quite otherwise by a similar language he surely miscalculated when he devoted his life and genius to so equivocal a psalmody as from his day to this has been said and sung by any rather than spiritual worshippers however as there is some traditional presumption, and certainly the opinion of some learned men, in favour of Omar's being a Sufi, and even something of a saint, those who please may so interpret his wine and cupbearer. On the other hand, as there is far more historical certainty of his being a philosopher, of scientific insight and ability far beyond that of the age and country he lived in, of such moderate worldly ambition as becomes a philosopher, and such moderate wants as rarely satisfy a debauchee other readers may be content to believe with me that while the wine omar celebrates is simply the juice of the grape he bragged more than he drank of it in very defiance perhaps of that spiritual wine which left its votaries sunk in hypocrisy or disgust edward fitzgerald end of section six of the rubaiyat of omar khayyam introduction to the third edition 1872. End of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam by Omar Khayyam. Translated by Edward Fitzgerald. Recording by Algie Pug.